Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I thought I'd make a quick follow-up to my smart parts video with an even smarter part. This is by Comptronics, then they, according to this little blurb on it, which I'm trying to read, it's the KR2042, which is basically a computer. Ah, yes, not responsible for lost rockets and or missing limbs. So this is a very, very smart part, as I said. It's part of the Kerbal operating system, KOS, or Chaos, obviously, because uh, that generally is what happens with Kerbal rockets. It's a computer, and you can log into it and type things such as print ship, uh, no, ship altitude, right? Uh, just altitude, there we go. And so that will print out the ship altitude at ridiculous levels of detail that the, the floating point system should not actually do. But that's great. What we want to do, though, is use it for automatic features. So I'm going to edit orbit, right? And so this is going to create a program in the computer's memory called orbit. Now, I already have the code for Orbit elsewhere, which has been checked and prepared earlier. So I just, you know, cut it from my thing and paste it into here. And you can see everything that it does. So we'll do that. You, we'll talk about that as we fly the rocket into space. Now, we have the program in memory, to, but to run it, we actually have to, on the command line, type run orbit. And we end every line with a full stop. Now, this won't kick in until we reach 75,000 meters or 75,000, yeah, 75 kilometers or 75,000 meters. And to get to that altitude, we're going to rely on this entirely unguided rocket. This is, of course, my version of the Lambda launch system designed by Japan, which has no launch guidance at all. It only uses smart parts to make sure that the staging triggers at the correct times. Now, this is also working with remote tech, as you can see here. Once we go above two and a half kilometers or three kilometers, there we go. We now no longer have a communications link back to base and the computer is entirely control of, in control of the ship. But it will wait until it passes 75,000 meters. Once it gets to that altitude, it will print guidance uh, in enabled. And then it will wait a little longer until its vertical speed is less than 25 meters per second, at which point it will say orienting. And then it will say log steering to heading 90 zero. So the heading is a compass direction 90 due east and zero, which means a pitch angle directly on the horizon. So from there, we're going to wait a few more seconds until we are we're going to wait until our vertical speed reaches three meters per second at which point we will continue our guidance we will then fire the engine locking the throttle to 100 percent and then wait until the periaps the other side of the orbit gets above 75,000 meters we'll deactivate the engine and then wait a second to make sure the deactivation happens and then we'll quit and I'm hoping this this thing, a spin stabilization, is pretty darn terrible. I hope we can actually get into orbit. Uh, this this spacecraft has been rather unpredictable. Hopefully, we've got enough altitude. Uh, <laughs> let's see what the map says. Oh, and what does it say? Not very high. Oh, uh, and we're falling. Two hundred meter, two hundred kilometers. Oh, that's not so bad. Okay, so there the the stage sequence activated letting the space probe fly free and when we reach 75 kilometers the other altimeter on this should cause the panels to deploy and the antenna now you'll notice that remote tech has given us access to control it again so i could take interactive control off it interactive of course not accounting for the um not accounting for the time delay and, but also, the program has really started, it's kicked through to its second sequence, and it says guidance is enabled. So we're going to time accelerate and wait for this to happen. We're waiting until we get near to the top of this orbit. So the great thing about Kerbal Operating System is it really does emulate a real kind of behavior in real rockets. Real rockets have computers on board. The computers will run all the maneuvering and they'll also be programmable. So it's quite common for routines used for deep space navigation to be purged from memory once the spacecraft, say, arrives in orbit around the planet. Similarly, when they're landing, they probably don't need to know routines for, you know, orbiting and things like that. So all these features 
kind of serve to make it a more realistic game. And when you combine it with remote tech, and you see I've gone out of range of remote tech, when you combine it with that, it becomes even more realistic because, of course, real spacecraft don't have real-time control when you're taking account of light speed interactions, right? So I'm not going to be able to control this. We're going to entirely rely on the Kerbal operating system here. Now, the, if you look at the wiki, there is a whole lot of things you can do with the Kerbal OS, Kerbal script. It, it has access to almost all the important parts of the spacecraft. I've seen people build sp spy, yeah, sky cranes. I've seen people build... Um, automated rovers that drive around the surface which is you know a cool idea of course because that's what um that's what curiosity does we're getting to the correct altitude and soon okay i'm waiting when's 25 25 meters per second we're waiting for our uh we're waiting for it to kick in it's going to say orienting and then it should turn and point the correct direction if it doesn't we're in trouble come on 25 meters per second where is it where is it Guidance is still there. Oh, there we go. Yes, so we're now pointed the correct direction. And we're now waiting for the alt for the vertical speed to drop to three, at which point the engine will throttle up. And there we go. So now we can switch to the map screen and just watch the orbit happen. So we're lifting our periapsis up. And when it reaches greater than 75,000 meters, the engine will throttle to zero and we will have a spacecraft in orbit. Not a very good orbit, but it will not fall back to the planet. And we can now wait for the spacecraft to come into a position where we can then talk to it again live. We can send new commands to it. We could perhaps uh, send it to rendezvous. It, really, it is for people that want to write you know, control systems for their rockets to perform a very complicated maneuver, Curb Script or Kerbal OS offers this feature. And when I do a future series, perhaps using real scale solar system, it will definitely be on the short list of mods that I want to use because I liked remote tech, uh, notwithstanding its problems, I liked the idea of remote tech, but I did have issues with the fact that you couldn't really automate things that weren't outside of the, weren't covered by the autopilots already. So yes, there you have it, a short demonstration of Kerbal OS, KOS, uh, created by Nivek and currently maintained by Aaron Drake. I hope that uh, a 1.0 version or a 1.0 compatible version happens when 1.0 happens. I'll look forward to that. Until uh, then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.